Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, a recent effort in generating high fidelity avatar poses given sparse observation that coming from head mounted device. This is um, in collaboration with my colleagues at Microsoft Mixed Reality team in Cambridge, Pashmina, Federica, Andrew, and Tom. So the goal of this project is to generate high fidelity and plausible uh, avatar poses given the signals that are coming from a head mounted device for mixed reality application. To do so, a solution would look like this. Given a person wearing a HoloLens, for example, we're going to have information about the head location and orientation as well as the hand location and orientation whenever they are in the field of view of the device. And from that sparse signal, we would like to generate uh, the 3D uh, avatar pose, hopefully the full body pose. One key factor here is that either of these representations actually uh, represent the same person. So there should be a kind of common representation of these two types of data in a shared latent space. This is what we do, and we learn that uh, kind of common representation with two different functions. One on the uh, left maps the data from the head mounted device to the latent space, and the other one on the right maps the 3D pose to the latent space. And the whole point of training is to uh, make sure that these two functions actually point into the same region in the latent space. However, in order to be useful for our application in mixed reality, each of these functions should have certain properties. For example, the mapping from the head mounted device signal to the latent space should deal with the sparse observation because that is the nature of its input. And again, because of that sparsity, there might be multiple plausible poses that can match the observation of the head and hands, so the model should uh, deal with uncertainty. And also because this, this is a very uh, under constrained problem, uh, the function should be expressive enough such that from that latent code in the latent space, we can recover the full body pose. For the same reasons, uh, the other function, the mapping from the pose to the latent space should deal with uncertainty, should be expressive enough, but more importantly, one key property of the function uh, is invertibility. Because if we train these two models uh, uh, together to point to the same region in the latent space, what we are actually interested in at the test time is to go from the head mounted device a signal to the latent space and use the inverse of the function that we use during training to go from the latent code to the 3D pose. We call our approach flag for flow based 3D avatar generation and before jumping into uh, the details of each of these functions that I just mentioned, let's take a look at the data. To train and evaluate our model, we use AMAS dataset, which is a large collection of uh, uh, captures from humans in different poses, in different body shapes, in different genders, and each of these uh, uh, humans are represented with simple model, which is a differentiable parametric generative model of human uh, body mesh, which gets as input the shape parameters beta, and uh, the pose in axis angle representation theta, and provides us with uh, the mesh of the body, from which we can come up with, for example, uh, the global transformation matrices of different joints which we use during uh, the training of our model. And finally, we have the HMD signal, which is, as I mentioned, is uh, the head location and orientation as well as the hand location and orientation whenever they're in, in the field of view of the camera. So now let's take a look at uh, the first function, the mapping between the 3D pose and the latent space. In order to model that mapping, we use a flow-based model. Uh, a conditional real NVP, which starts from a base distribution, which could be as simple as uh, a normal uh, distribution. And a flow based model defines a transformation, uh, particularly an invertible transformation, which could look like this. Based on neural networks, for example, this is uh, a standard real NVP uh, transformation block. And what uh, this transformation does is gets as input a probability distribution and shrinks or stretch this distribution to come up with another probability distribution, hopefully a little bit more complex. And because we know how much the uh, volume, uh, we need to know how much the volume uh, has been changed through this transformation because we want to make sure that the resulting distribution has the same probability mass as the incoming one. And in order to make a uh, more complex distribution, we can stack multiple of these transformations together to come up with a 
relatively more complex distribution, hopefully representing the distribution of human poses. We call this combination of transformation F theta, a flow base, uh, like a normalizing flow, which can be conditioned on any additional information that we have, like the body shape or the head and hand uh, signal. And because each of these transformations are invertible, we can go the other way around. We can go from the human pose to the latent space, and we know how much the volume has been changed along the way, and also we know how to compute the likelihood of a point in the base distribution because it's a known distribution. So we can use the change of variable formula to come up with the exact likelihood of a point in our data, which we used for training this model with maximum likelihood. So let's take a look at the other function, mapping from HMT signal to the latent space. So the whole point of this function is to get as input these three pieces of information, come up with a latent code that if we pass to the normalizing flow model can generate a full body pose. For, for doing that, we need a really expressive function. For example, we can use transformer encoder because of the self-attention. We hope that it learns the relationship between the different inputs that we have and come up with a good latent code. But we found that this is a relatively hard problem because three pieces of information is really sparse to come up with a representation that generates full body. And also because, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, there are multiple poses that are likely to match these three observations. So predicting a single latent code is not actually what we want. We need a, like a distribution over plausible latent codes. So to deal with such problems, instead of providing the transformer encoder with only three pieces of information, we provide them with information about all joints in the body. And we hope that the encoded representation after the transformation each joint have the information about all other joints. And in order to pull that information, we only pick the head and hand representation and pass it to a probabilistic neural network with discrete latent space. I won't go into the detail. To come up with a subregion in the latent space in which the latent code that we are interested in has high likelihood under. However, this is not fair because at the test time we do not have access to all joints in the body. So during training, we start gradually masking different joints that are not visible at the test time until we reach only head and hands. It's like, like mask and prediction in birth pre-training. And for that, we add an auxiliary task of mastery and prediction. And in order to accelerate the training, we add another auxiliary task of post-prediction. Now let's take a look at how we can train this model. To train the flow based model, we know how to compute the likelihood, so we use the negative log likelihood uh, uh, to train this model. And if we look at how a normalizing flow is formed, we know that we have the pose at one end, we have the base distribution at the other end. And if we go in the other direction and look at the post progression through this transformation, it looks like this. And we see that lots of good stuff is happening at the end that we see a, an actual uh, realistic pose. So we observed that, uh, we, we thought that what we can do to make better use of the intermediate transformations in the flow based model. So we add intermediate supervision, which means we use the same network, but we use the sub networks of this, uh, consider each as a full generative model of human pose. It's like having multiple flow based models with the shared transformation and the uh, extension of the loss function and, and the post progression would look like this, which we uh, also observe in the experiment that the model has better capabilities. And the loss function would be like adding multiple other negative log likelihood weighted based on the depth of the network. To train the other function, the transformer model uh, that uh, approximated, approximates the latent uh, region that we are interested in, we had two auxiliary tasks, so we have two reconstruction losses, and we have our main loss, which actually maximizes the likelihood of the latent code that we are interested in under the uh, distribution that the model approximates. To generate new poses, we have a couple of options. We can use direct prediction, like given head and hands, we pass that to the transformer model, we come up with the subregion in the latent space, we take the mean of that, and then we pass it to the normalizing flow and come up with a pose. We can also optimize to come up with poses. Like, for example, we can optimize in the pose space, which means we search for a set of parameter theta that has high likelihood under our flow-based model and also matches the observation of head and hands. 
or we can optimize in the latent space, which we search for a good latent code that uh, has high likelihood, that leads to a pose that has high likelihood under the model and also matches the observation. And for optimization in the latent space, we have like a good tool to come up with a good initialization of the latent code, like the mean of the region that we approximated. And we see in a bit how that affects the optimization. So let's take a look at a couple of results. Here there are multiple uh, examples. Uh, on the left we have the ground truth in orange, on the right we have the perforin prediction of flag. Uh, as, and, and as you can see, um, for upper bodies, really faithful to the signal that we have. For lower body is not um, as accurate as upper body as shown in uh, the color coded, uh, it's color coded based on the distance between the vertices of the prediction to the ground truth. But as you can see for example for the running sequence that it is believable. In another experiment we see how the model behaves when uh, it deals with even a sparser observation. Here you can see the ground truth and we have now hand visibility status. On top, for example, left and right hand are visible and then we have the uncertainty map out of the network. And uh, you can see that uh, the model is pretty certain about upper body because both hands are available, the head is always available. But we, as soon as we start masking one hand or another or both, the model it becomes aware that uh, it has higher uncertainty around the hand uh, that is masked. And this is quite common in mixed reality scenarios because one hand may go out of the field of view of the camera. And here we also have the best prediction, like we pick mu h, uh, the mean of this approximate region in the latent space uh, and come up with a pose and as you can see, uh, the error in the body uh, like correlates with the uncertainty which is a good thing. And here are a bunch of uh, random samples generated from different latent code in that subregion. Now let's take a look at a couple of quantitative results. We report the mean per joint position error for our approach as well as a couple of baselines. Here there is a very close approach. It's also a conditional flow based model. Uh, but instead of coming, uh, starting uh, the latent code from like a learned way uh, given the conditions, it just starts the latent code with z equals zero because it has the high li highest likelihood under the base distribution. But we show that um, although z equals zero is a good thing to start with, learning to find a better latent code given the observations that we have is a better solution and you can see here with the errors uh, for the upper body or full body as well as how it affects uh, the, the generated poses. And also we show how uh, initia initialization of the latent code affect the optimization. Uh, in blue on the top we have uh, that baseline, the flow based baseline for the optimization in the latent space that it starts with z equals zero uh, and we plot um, error as a function of optimization iteration. It's good uh, we, as we go more and more in optimization, uh, if we continue optimization the error uh, becomes lower and lower. If we keep the same initialization but change the architecture to our approach like with intermediate supervision, we see that the error goes down uh, considerably and if we start from a better place, uh, uh, we have a, a better performance. And finally here is a demo on HoloLens. Uh, on the right you see me wearing a HoloLens, perform some armography, then we have the signal that coming from the uh, device like head and hand location uh, and orientation and the, uh, on the other end we have the perform prediction of our model that is realistic uh, and also uh, faithful to the signal that coming from the device. In conclusion, um, this is a quite an important problem to address because people are at the center of mixed reality application and it's quite important to, uh, to have a realistic and faithful avatars for a good mixed reality experience. And this is a challenging problem. It's not uh, straightforward to come up with a full body pose and you can see like in lots of demos from uh, uh, Microsoft Mesh or different companies that mostly upper body is visualized but generating full body is like uh, very challenging. Uh, and flag provides a solution to that. Uh, we observe that like optimization is always good. 
we provide a, a good way of coming up with a good initialization for the optimization on top of neural network inference. And also, we uh, introduce a couple of tricks to better perform uh, on or generative model like the uh, intermediate supervision for the flow-based model. Thank you very much. And uh, you can find more results and details on FLAG website. OK, thank you for a great talk. Do we have questions? So a small question, uh, probably a silly question uh, at the end. You know, so you, I, I know the focus is to show the full body motion, but the HoloLens gives you the full hand tracking or so, but I saw the hands were just rigid hands. Why didn't you just plug the hand tracking data in? Or? Um, we, we didn't use it. We used simple. We didn't use simple H with the hands, but it's like uh, pretty much doable to just incorporate the hand at uh, the fingers. Uh, yeah, which yeah. could be a natural extension. Yeah, that would be yeah. cool. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Um, hi, I've got a question about the last video you showed um, where you could see, uh, yeah, exactly this one. Uh, you could see on the right that the hand pose was a little bit jittering. Um, is that due to the error of uh, the detection of a hand pose and you want to match that one to one? Or are you considering maybe to use some kind of filter in the end, for example, a hidden Markov model or a Kalman filter to smooth the position? Uh, I don't know what exactly your goal is to either approximate it or to really interpolate between the points. Very good question. So this is like the direct prediction out of the network. And as I said, it's, there's no temporal information used in this model. It's per frame prediction. Mm -hmm. So if we add temporal information or we add like temporal smoothness as post-processing, we're going to have like better performance. Like, is that the roadmap for the future to add temporal information or is that the This is a very natural extension. It's okay. quite like we have per frame. We can add any, for example, recurrent neural nets uh, to, to model the temporal information. Cool. Any other questions? Uh, hello. Uh, very nice presentation. Thank you. Um, so it looks like uh, you train on like a AMAS data set, which is like uh, maybe slightly bit different when we uh, wear like a HoloLens. Because uh, when you wear HoloLens, maybe our action must or our like body movement is slightly different. So do you have any plan to collect data set uh, while you're using like um, wearing HoloLens and then have like a full body tracking or something like that? Yeah, for this, this is a CVPR paper, and for the sake of publication, we need to compare with others on publicly available data set. But yes, like there are lots of scenarios in AMAS data set, like martial arts, that we are not interested in, like <laughs> immediately interested in, like uh, <laughs> presence. So uh, yeah, and for that, we need to have our own data set that matches the scenarios that we are actually interested in. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. All right, so if we do not have any other questions, let's thank the speaker.